the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We celebrate on this 3rd of July the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. We give thanks for Thomas's presence in the Gospel because he's a real person. He struggles with doubt. He seeks to be a person of faith. And there's a real honesty in the midst of that struggle. And in meeting the peace the risen Lord brings, it gives hope to Thomas and it gives hope to us as individuals, as families, as a parish community, and as a nation seeking to be a peaceful presence in the world today as we celebrate Independence Day tomorrow here in the United States. Let us recognize our call to be instruments of that peace. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, O ye nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, 
peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Earlier this week, I was in the car driving somewhere. It was at about noon, and as I drove, it was sort of wild. You can feel that a lot of people are returning to their old habits, having gone through this time of sheltering in place and living a quieter life. A lot of people, I think, are making up for lost time and driving like maniacs. So as I drove, I was trying to be as respectful and as safe as I could be. I decided that one thing that would help me would be to call my mom. I used the Bluetooth speaker in the car, so it was hands-free, and I had a couple of things I wanted to talk with her about real quick, just to follow up with her. And as I drove, and as we talked, I got this strong sense that there was this crazy world all around me. And yet, on the other end of the line was somebody who was so peaceful. So peaceful. Toward the end of our conversation, I said that to my mom. I said, thank you for being peaceful. Thank you for being somebody who is in the world today who is practicing the peace of the risen Lord. That is what the risen Lord is always offering when he arrives, the gift of peace. So thank you. Of course, in her humility, my mom didn't think that she was any more peaceful than anybody else, but I assured her she indeed is. Thomas is full of questions. And Thomas often struggles to reconcile things that he encounters in Christ. The things that happen along this journey of life that are hard to fathom, and the things that are even harder to fathom that the Lord does to redeem those sufferings and struggles. Thomas has his share of struggle, and as such, he becomes such a great patron saint for all of us. That Struggle is a part of life. We can't pretend that we don't struggle. We can't run from the reality of those struggles because often that's where God is leading us. But the risen Lord offers us a peace to accompany us into the journey of life. The risen Lord invites us to practice that peace, to be people who believe in it and who do our best usher in a new reign, to usher in God's reign of peace on this earth. It is something that we as a nation try to hold dear, that we'd like to be instruments of peace in the world, that we seek to be part of a new kind of world in which the common good is served by the way we live. That is our hope and her goal, challenging as it is. And it is good to know that we have such company in the Apostle Thomas. It wasn't always easy, but he kept listening to the risen Lord. He kept drawing his strength from the risen Lord. And we believe that he received that gift of peace that transformed him, that sent him out into the world to be an instrument of good news and to bear a legacy that we have now inherited. We seek to receive the peace of the risen Lord. We seek to make a home for that peace in our hearts, and we seek to be instruments of it so that the reign of God may actually arrive in our midst.
grateful that the Lord continues to accompany us with peace, wisdom, strength, and kindness. Let us offer our prayers. For all of us who celebrate this Mass together, for God's continued blessings on our lives, that we may bear all the gifts of the Eucharist to the world, especially in divine goodness and peace. Let us pray to the Lord for our parish family, our diocese, and our church throughout the world, for the grace to put into practice the words we speak. Let us pray to the Lord for all who are suffering, for victims of injustice and discrimination, for the voiceless and vulnerable of the world, for all who struggle to make ends meet financially. Let us pray to the Lord for the sick, for all who are in pain, for those undergoing medical treatment or testing of any kind, for the terminally ill, for comfort, strength, and hope. Let us pray to the Lord for all who have died, especially for Kevin Wright, whom we lift up in a special way, for unbounded joy and eternal life with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of all, thank you for creating us in your love and blessing us each season of our lives. Through your Son, Jesus, you have made us members of your household, brothers and sisters with all the holy ones, called to build up your family through the ages. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit, that like all those who have gone before us, we may recognize, enjoy, and cherish your many gifts, live in gratitude for your blessings, and generously share our time, talent, and treasure in building our legacy for those who come after us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth and Seton, pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Through him you have accompanied your flock, and you keep us safe through the blessed apostles, watching over us and protecting us always, so that we may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. With mercy on us all, we pray, but with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. You only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Oh God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body and blood of your only begotten Son, grant we pray that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.